Gertov, and today's daf Yomi is dedicated to Yeshua and the Hama for all of Kal Yisrael, and that all those who are in captivity should be released speedily and at once. So we've seen a, de a debate, a dispute between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yossi about where there were two sets of wives, or there were two groups. One, a man is married to two wives, and each one has two daughters. And 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 he says, I'm um, betrothing my older one. So our mayor says it includes the three the three oldest daughters, but not the absolute youngest. Rabbi Yossi says, no, it only includes the oldest. And also they have the same debate about the youngest daughter. If he says, I'm betrothing my younger daughter, mayor says it, it, it only excludes the oldest daughter. All the three of the, the other three ones are all included because they could possibly be younger than someone. Rabbi Yossi says it includes no, only the absolute youngest. So three lines in the bottom on 64b, Amar Abaye, Machokas Peshtekite Banos. This is only a dispute between Rabbi and Rabbi Yossi where there were two separate sets of daughters. But if there's one group of daughters, everybody's going to be of the opinion that when he says I'm betrothing my older daughter, it means Kedola Mamish. It means my absolute oldest daughter, the absolute oldest. And Kitana means Kitana Mamish. And because the katana means the absolute youngest daughter, because if he had in mind to betroth the middle daughter, he would have called her by her middle name, he would have called her, I'm betrothing my middle daughter. That's what Abayi says. So he says, if that's the case, well, if that's the case, the middle daughter in the second group, Tishtri, the middle daughter in the second group should be permitted. And here what we must be talking about is that if we're going to say in a situation where there was only one wife and three daughters, that the middle one is permitted. And also in a case where there was, where there were two sets of wives, there was two wives and there was two sets of, two sets of uh, daughters, then the middle daughter in the second group should be uh, permitted because how is she going to be called the Godoa? How would she, if there were three daughters to the second wife, she would have been called the middle wife. She would have been called the middle daughter. So, so the Gemara says, no, what well, we're talking about in a situation, where there really is only, in the second wife, the younger wife, there's only two, two daughters, an adult, an older and a younger. And so therefore, there's no middle one there. It's logical to assume that the Misa de Ika, because if there were three girls in the second for the younger marriage, for the younger wife, then this Naya, it should have been written. And so from the fact that it only talks about two daughters, it means that there wasn't three daughters there. Mara says, according to your logic, well, according to your logic, the middle one of the first of the older wife in that scenario, where there it certainly is a doubt, the Asirale, and she would be prohibited, Mikatani, was she listed? So meaning to say, meaning to say the that one would certainly be prohibited, Rashi says, the Vade Asira and Miesh Nasham, if she would be there, she'd be prohibited. Why? Because as Rashi says, Daha Daha Modis or the Hamodim the call kat rishon or gabi kat shnia that that everybody agrees that the whole first group vis a vis the second group is called older and so therefore she would have been prohibited. So from the fact that if that's not listed and yet we're going to say she's prohibited, why wouldn't it be listed? So the Gemara says hachiyasha. The two cases are not the same. Hasam tana ketana dida liisura ruadin lahachta kashisha. There with respect. To the older older wife, it lists the younger one, the youngest daughter of the older wife, and says she's prohibited. And so obviously it's also the case that the old one older than her is also older, so she'd be prohibited. But Hacha and Isa, but here, if it's the case that the one who's older than the youngest daughter of the second wife, if she's also prohibited, Nisnaya, it should be listed. So indeed, Amroi Rafuna Bereda Rav Yoshua Rava. What about the fact that there's Pesach, where we had a case yesterday about if you that if you say that I'm prohibited to take any pleasure until Pesach, 
Ad Pnei Pesach, until before Pesach, that there was a dispute about that. And that is also the Kikat Achas Tami. That's like there's one wife, because there's only one element there, Pesach, Upuigi, and yet there's still a dispute there between Ramey and Rabbi Yossi. So we see that even in the case where he says the middle daughter, even in the case where there's three daughters, the middle one should be prohibited. Gemara says no. Gemara says, Amalei Hasam Belisha Da Alma Kamafli. There, they're not arguing. There, they're not arguing about whether or not uh, you put yourself into a doubt, which is how we explained the dispute between Ramey and Rabbi Yossi. But rather, they're arguing about what does the actual language of Pnei Pesach mean. Mar Savar, Ad Pnei Pesach means Ad Kamei Pesach. One says it means until before Pesach. Mar Savar, Ad Mifnei Pesach. And the other one says it means until Pesach, until uh, the conclusion of Pesach. Uh, so, so that's the dispute. It's not the same dispute as, the, as we were having in our Mishnah. That's the Gemara's conclusion. Okay, so now we're up to the next Mishnah. Omer Isha, a man says to his wife, Kidashtich, we're gonna, he says, you actually are married to me. Vihi Omer, she says, no, I never was married to you. Lo Kiddishtani, you never married me. Who are Kribosel? Because he says he's prohibited to her. Therefore, he's prohibited to all her relatives because he says, I'm prohibited to you. So consequence, he can't marry relatives. Vihi Muteris Bekrovam, but she's going to be permitted to marry his relatives. How is she permitted to marry his relatives? Because she, she, there's no reason why he can say she's prohibited. She, she says, I'm not prohibited. So he doesn't have the ability to make her prohibited. So now, next case. He omeris kidash tani. He, she says, you marry me, but omer lo kidash she, And he says, no, I never did. Again, he doesn't say he, he was prohibited to her, so therefore he's allowed to be with her relatives. And she's prohibited to his relatives. Again, so that's the same logic. It's just coming in from the opposite direction. Case number three, Kidash Tich. She says, um, he says to her, I, you, you're married to me. She says, no, you only married my daughter. You didn't marry me. So who else are Bekrovas Kedola? So he thinks he's prohibited to her. So he's not allowed to be with the mother's relatives. Ugadoa, but the mother is Muteris Bekrovav, is allowed to be with his relatives because she never said she was prohibited. Umotar Bekrovos Katana, he's going to be allowed to be with his daughter or with her daughter's relatives because he never said she was prohibited. Ugatana Muteris Bekrovav, and the and the daughter is permitted to his relatives because it was only the mother who made the claim and the daughter didn't make the claim. She's a minor. And the father didn't make the claim, as we'll see in the Gemara. Fourth case, Kidash Yespiteach, he says, I married your daughter. He omeris lo kidash she She said, no, you betrothed me. So there, same logic. Who also serve Katana? He can't be with the relatives of the minor. Who Katana muteres bekrovav, and the minor is permitted to his relatives. Who mutar bekrovas kedoa? He's allowed to be with the relatives of the adult. Who kedoa serve bekrovav, and the adult woman is prohibited to be with his relatives. And the Gemara is going to explain that this is actually the fourth case is actually able to have been deduced on its own from the previous three cases, and the Gemara will explain why it's anyways listed here. So the Gemara tells us, the first case, a man says to a woman, I betrothed you, and she says, no. And then it says, if she says, you betrothed me, and he says, no, so then we have the Why do we need to say both cases? We have a case where he makes the claim and uh, that he's married to her, and the second case where she makes the claim she's married to him. Mar says, "Di Yashmin and Gabba Diday. If only only the case where he makes the claim, I would say the reason why we have that case is Mishum the Gabba will Ichbat Lai Mikre. So we might have said the reason why I don't care is because he doesn't. He he's not. It doesn't matter for him to be prohibited to her, and and so therefore we don't believe him to with respect to uh, making uh, her prohibited because." Because big deal, so he can't marry her, but he's still permitted to marry everybody else in the world. But so Gavra will ifbat leu mikre, Amar aval ihi. But so so therefore, when it, as it comes to him, we don't we don't care, and so therefore, uh, uh, so uh, but if she's the one who makes the claim. So excuse me. So so he says. And so therefore we're going to make this case of he said Kidashtia, even though uh even though he didn't betroth her, therefore we're not going to believe it. But in the case where Avohi, where she's the one who makes the claim she was married to him, we would have said, if she wasn't certain 
she was 100% certain that he was married to him. If she wasn't certain, lo havas amra, she wouldn't have said it. We might have said, let's believe her because, of, because she has a lot more to lose. Because if she says she's married, she can't be with anybody else in the world. And so therefore, as a consequence, we should say, he's also prohibited to her relatives. But we don't say that. We don't say that. Let's say she says, she says, he says to her, I betrothed you. And she says, you didn't betroth me, but, but you betrothed my daughter. So then we have this case, which is all self-explanatory. So why do we need this case? What's the Chiddush here? Hasu Amalei, what's the Chiddush here? So the verse says, it's Jech, I'll tell you why. Salka da'ita chamina, you might have thought, me di'araisa, hemne rachmano a'av. You might have thought that biblically speaking, the Torah would believe the father. Since we know from the previous Mishnah, the Torah believes the father if he says he married off his minor daughters. We might have said, me di'arabana ne'em nu'u adidah. And we should have said rabbinically, we will also believe the mother. And if the mother makes the claim that the daughter was married, we should have at least prohibited her rabbinically. We don't say that. Okay, next case. He says, I betrothed your daughter. So again, this is the fourth case, but this is too much. We, we could have inferred this on our own. Why are we even recording this case? It's so obvious. It's not, it's not introducing any new legal principles. The Gemara explains, well, the only reason why it's recorded is, well, because we had the previous cases, we also list this case, just for symmetry. So now the, the Gemara introduces a memra. It Rav Amar Kofin. Rav says, we force him to divorce her. Where she claims she was married to him, we force him to divorce her. Shmuel says, Nevaksha, we ask him to divorce her. So Gemara says, what case is this referring to? Ah, hi, which case is it referring to? If it's a case where he says, you're married to me, and she says, no, I'm not married to you. Meaning to say, there, it, we don't force him and we don't request it. Meaning to say, he doesn't, he, she's, she's not married, doesn't need to give her a get. Uh, he, she, doesn't, she doesn't need a get from him. She's allowed to marry his relatives. And so, and if we're going to give her a get, then she's going to be prohibited to marry his relative. And we're going to consider her like a divorcee. So we're not going to give her a get under those circumstances. So Gemara says, okay, you're right. Ella, say if it's the next case where she claims she's married, and he says, I never married you. So, so that's the case we're referring to as Seifa. So the Gemara says, well, Bisham and Mavakshin, okay, well, if that's the case, it makes sense to say he's asked, we ask for him nicely to give a get. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, we'd say just give a get, be nice. Ella Kofin. But we force him to give the get? Am I? Why? How can we force him to the, give the get? He has every legal right to say, well, Amar, well, Nicholi, it's a big craving. If I give her a get, I'm not going to go marry her mother or sister or her daughter. I don't want to become prohibited to them. It's not my, why should I have to be prohibited to them? So why would we force them under those circumstances to give the get? So Gemara says, okay, well, let's take a new novel reading. The two teachings, actually, Rav and Shmuel are not in, in conflict, but they are reflections on each other. Because what Itmar, we learned, this is how you read it. Amr Shmuel Mevakshmi Menoli Tengesh. Shmuel says, we ask him if she says, I was married to him. And he says, no, you weren't. We ask him to give the get. And about that, Rav said, but if nothing get me asthma, if he says, if he comes forward on his own and says, you know what, I'm going to give the get, then Kofano so he takes suva. Then we see that he's admitting it. So we force him to also pay the suva payment, the bond payment, in addition to, to, to giving the get, because there he's admitted that he was married to her. So and it marnami amravacha barada marav amule amravacha barada marav nuna marav kofin mevakshin that we for the he taught that we force and we ask tariti does that make sense both so the more explains so he come from mevakshin men only take gap him not some asmo kofin also he takes suba if he gave it as only for we ask him to give we force him to give a suba so amarav yehuda so now we get into this sugya amikadish beid echad ein choshin lekedusha let's say a person betrothed the woman but he only had one witness so Rav says. And Rav Yehuda says, we don't have to be concerned that it's a valid Kiddushin. The Kiddushin requires two witnesses. And if it's only one witness, we don't have to be concerned at all that it's a valid Kiddushin. So the Gemara says, Rav Yehuda. Well, what about the following scenario? Shnei modim. Let's say both say, listen, we were married. Even though there's only one witness, they both agree to the act. They both agree. They admit, they stipulate the circumstances. What would be the law? In Vilav Rafi Biyadi, so Rabbi Huda wasn't sure. It was wishy washy, it was back and forth, it was soft in his hands. So then they said, In Mar Amar Nachman, Amar Shmuel, Amar Kadesh Beid Echad, Ein Choshen Lakatushim. So then they cite the position, Rabbi Nachman, Amar Shmuel, that if you betrothed with one witness, you don't think it's a valid Kadushim, but a few Shneem Modim. Even if both admit it's not valid. So the Mar is going to challenge this. So Ace Be Rabbi Rav Nachman, Amar from our Mishnah. 
He says to the woman, I married you, but he don't marry so kidashtani. She said, No, you didn't. Two us are Bakrova So she's allowed to marry his relatives, but he can't marry her relatives. Now, what's the case? If it's a case where there are two witnesses, am I Muteris Bakrova? Why would he be allowed to marry her relatives? But either like aid him if there's no witnesses, am I also Bakrova Sal? Why would he be prohibited to marry her relatives? So must be oh isn't a scenario where there was one witness. Look at Rashi, I just want to say, if there's no witnesses, why would he be prohibited? Why wouldn't we say he's admitting, and so therefore he's prohibited? So Rashi says, Even if he admits it, he shouldn't have been prohibited to her relatives on the basis of his own admission. Because even according to his claim, it wouldn't be a valid betrothal, because you need the inami amar be'ed echad av kedushin v'sheshnei emodim hecha de'ein echad lo amras. Even though there's a claim that if there's one witness, it's possible that it's a kedushin, but if there's no witnesses, nobody agrees that it's a valid kedushin. The eid echad because one witness has a, has a power by Jewish law to make you bring an oath by monetary payment, and so therefore, okay, maybe by one witness, but nobody says that if there's no witnesses, it will be a valid betrothal. So therefore, that's what Rashi's assertion is. So that's the basis of this question of the Gemara. So therefore, it must be that what we're talking about, the scenario of the Mishnah is el echad, it must be that there's one witness, and Nachamai Eskina, and what's the scenario? Could go into Amrwa, Kidashtiach, he said to her, so what we're talking about is there's one witness, and he said to her, I betrothed you, if nay, pony, you pony, and Vahochu, so the Gemara says, it must be, I'm el so the Gemara says, so the Gemara says, no, it's not what we're talking about one witness. What we're talking about here is going to Amal Kiddash Dech, but Pony, Pony. This is not a case. It's talking about one witness. It's talking about there were two witnesses. So how could there be a dispute? Because he said, I, I had Reuben and Shimon as witnesses. They're overseas. They're no longer here. So it's not a case of one witness. It's a case of two witnesses. The witnesses aren't there. Another attempt against Rav Nachman, who says that if you betroth the woman with one witness, you don't have to be concerned. It's a valid betrothal. Well, the Gemara challenges from his second case. Ace is a mission in Git in someone who divorces his wife. And then afterwards, she spends the night with him in a hotel. And we're concerned that since they were already married once, if they just spend the night together in the hotel, that they would have been intimate. And that would have been intimacy for the purpose of betrothal, since they already had a, a very close relationship. So Beishamai says, and, and under these circumstances, even though they spent the night together in a hotel, they don't need another get. Uh, Basil says, Basil says they do need a, a second get. So, what's the scenario? If there are witnesses there, my time out of then what's the reason why Beishamai says, what's the reason why Beishamai says that they don't need another get? There are witnesses to their consummation. If there's no witnesses, my tamar de Basil, why does Basil say that they need another get? El must be what's the case here, Bait Echa, that there's one witness. And and Basil says they need another get. And we see that you could do a condition with one witness. So this is against Rav Nachman, because why would Rav Nachman argue with Basil, who we hold like? So Gemara says, So Gemara says, according to your logic, Ema Seifa, according to your logic. What's the next clause in that Mishnah? Modem ben Iskarsham and Irusin. Don't they admit in a case where they were divorced from the Irusin, from just the betrothal, not the full marriage? That that she does not require get sheni. Because there we don't have to assume that they were intimate because since they had just been betrothed. He had never been with her. So therefore, since he wasn't accustomed to being with her, we don't assume that they were there, they were with each other that night. It's your assumption that Basil's position is that that one witness is believed that there was a betrothal. What do we care if it's from the betrothal or the full marriage? So that's obviously not the case here that it's a one witness. So it's a different dispute. There were witnesses to their seclusion, but there were no witnesses to the consummation. So Beishamai Sabri, Beishamai is going to be at the position on the top of 65B. Beishamai says it's not a valid betrothal because we don't say that the witnesses to the seclusion is the same as witnesses to the consummation. So therefore, we don't view it as a 
betrothal, and so therefore, as a consequence, they're not married. Or Basil Savri Amir and Hainin Ede Yuchud Hainin Ede Bia. He also says, "No, we have the witnesses to the seclusion. We're going to assume that they were also intimate, since they were already bar- married, and therefore they need a second divorce." Umodim, but Basil would admit Vaday Ben Eskarshem and Eirusin that certainly in in the case where they were divorced just from betrothal and not uh, not a full marriage, though Amir and Hainin Ede Yuchud Hainin Ede Bia. Even they still would admit that they don't need a divorce if you only have witnesses to a seclusion from a betrothal, because then we don't assume that they would have consummated because they had never been together before. So, how do we rule on this? Amar Yitzhak Bar Shmuel, Bar Marta, Mishmei the Rav, and the Kaddish Beit Echad, Enchol, like Rav Nachman, he says, if you do a betrothal with one witness, we don't have to be concerned about the betrothal. Even if both of them admit it's not valid. And that's how we rule it. That's how we rule. And I'm a rabbi baravuna, I'm a kaddish beit echad beit dina rabbi amri ain't choshen like do so. We don't we don't think it's a valid betrothal. And the gemara is a tangent. Mam beit dina rabbi. Who is this beit dina rabbi? Rav. That's Rav's court. But you could amri alternatively. I'm a rabbi baravuna, I'm a rabbi, I'm a kaddish beit echad beit dina rabbi amri ain't choshen like do so. Different version. Mam beit dina rabbi. Who is this? Rabbi. So Rabbi's bezin says. If you betrothed her with one witness, you don't need a betrothal. So the Gemara says, must have Rabbi Achaz boy barami. So he says, well, let me ask you about the following case. Shnaim Shabal mi Medina Sayam. Let's say you have two people coming from overseas. Mayam. We're going to challenge this idea that if there's one witness, we don't, we, we're not going to rely upon them for the betrothal. What about the case where there's two people coming from overseas and there's a woman with them, Mayam, and they have a bag amongst them? Zelmer Zuishti Vizavdi one says, This is my wife and this is my slave, Vizu Khavilasi, and this is my this is my carry-on bag, Vizelmer Zuishti Zevdi Vizu Khavilasi. The other one says, No, this isn't my wife, this is my slave, this is my bag. The Isha Maris, and there's a third story here. The woman says, Avdai these are both my servants, and this is my bag. So we're going to say Tsrikhashnegit, and she requires a gift from both of them. The Gova Ksuva Sa Mina Khavila. And yet, and she, since she is Required to get a ksuv from them, she's going to take the ksuva from this bundle. So she's able to come forward and collect a get from both of them. She needs it, and she gets this bundle as her ksuva because neither one has full possession of it. We don't know whose money it is, and she has a claim against both of them. And they and both of them admit that they were married to her. So one of them was for sure married, so it's for sure ksuva. But the says, "Now, dummy, what's this case?" If each one has two witnesses, me matzi amri. Would they, uh, would, under those circumstances, if each one has two witnesses, would the woman be able to claim, would she be able to just contradict these two witnesses? She wouldn't be able to do that. She can't testify against the two witnesses that she's married to one of them and they're, and, and, it was their it was their basket. Her testimony wouldn't be valid there. So it must be that what we're talking about here is it must be we're talking about one witness. So the Gemara says, is, do you really think the case that there's one witness? The Tizbara Eid Echad, you think that that the Bryce is talking about where there's one witness, the Tizbara Eid Echad Bachasha Mimahemin. If there's one witness and another witness contradicts him, in this case, each one has one witness, we don't believe that one witness. So that would be nothing. So the Gemara says it must be Ella, La Mishra, La Alma, Koyama, La Puji to allow the woman to marry whoever she wants, everybody would say she's permitted. Even though she didn't receive a gift from one of them. But ha ha, but here what we're talking about is on the on the bundle that or the bag that she's disputing. This woman says, the Tana say, this woman, she's going to require that these men give her the get so that she could collect her basket. Because really the basket is something that each one has an equal claim to. But if they gave her a get, then she would be able to collect the ksuva mimanashach. Either she collects it from this person, she says, this is your basket, and you could give me the ksuva, or this one. So if they would give her the get, each one would be able to make the claim. This is the position of Rabbi Meir, the Amar, metalto and meshavil ksuva. So he says that even though it's not land, it's just movable objects, the ksuva has a lien on even on movable objects to pay her. Just want to say before we um, go on in the Gemara that this case reminds me of a similar case where a man came back uh, in Vilna and he claimed, I don't know if it's a real story, or apocryphal, and he claimed that he was married to this woman whose husband had disappeared many years before and the Vilna, and nobody knew how to, and the woman said, she's not my husband, but he knew everything about her. 
So uh, we didn't, the, they went to the Vilna Gaon and says, this man claims he's her husband. And she says he's not. And he knows all the facts. So the Vilna Gaon said, ask him what he, what he what Haftorah was at his Ofrof. And that's how they caught him. Because you can learn the facts, but the spiritual, the spiritual, you would know, you would know if it was really you. And so therefore this guy had been in prison with the man, and, uh, with her husband, and he learned all the information. But he didn't. He didn't know about the the spiritual. He didn't know about the ofrof, the haftorah at the ofrof. So there's another case to know the Yehuda, where he tricked the person to figure it out. I could tell you that another time. But my avia, well, what was the what's the conclusion? Rav Kahana, Amar Ein Choshen LeKedusha. Rav Kahana says, if you have one witness, we don't assume it's a kedushin. My papa says Choshen LeKedusha. My papa says we do think it's kedushin. Amar Le Rav Ashi or Rav Kahana, my datech. Why do you think if there's one witness, we don't think it's a Kedushin? The Aleph Davar Davar mean Mamon. We learn out Kedushin from money, just like by money you need two witnesses. Also here you need two witnesses. Logamar says, Email Alan, but by money, Odas Baldin Kamea Edim Dami. But by money, if one witness admits to something, if the Baal, if the litigant admits to it, it's like a hundred witnesses. So to here also, if the one of the parties admits to the betrothal, it should be valid. Afkan Odas Baldin Kamea Edim Dami. Versus, it's completely different cases. There's a huge distinction. If one party to a case says, I owe you money, we believe him because he's just making himself have to pay the money. But here, if one of the parties to the marriage says it, well, now you put a onus on other people. That Now they have different things that they're not allowed to do. But sometimes when you do a uh, uh, admission in a civil case, it also impacts others. In that case, we probably wouldn't believe the, the personal admission. So Marzutra Varavada Saba B'nai Dirami Mar Dirav Mari Bar Isar Polik Nechsayu Bad Adedai. They were dividing their assets. And they want to know, do we need to get a witness? Do we need to like, pay the money to go get a witness to 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 look at our division? Also, Kami Dravashi Amrway, they said, so they came to Ravashi and he said, the Torah requires two witnesses. So they came to Ravashi and they said to him, listen, listen, the Torah says two witnesses to make sure that you can't recant. You can't do any funny business. But we, we trust each other. We're never going to... Um, uh, uh, we, we're, not, we're not disputing that we're, ending, that, we're, that we're splitting up this asset. And so therefore... Without witnesses, the division should be able to be effect, take effect. Odoma, Womakaima Milsa, Alba Sahadi. Or maybe what it's saying is that the only way you can do this division is through witnesses. So they said this to Ravashi, Amaru, Lo Ibru Sahadi, Ella Shakri. He says, No, the witnesses are only created for the liars. And in this case, since you're not lying, uh, we're, we're not going to uh, require the witnesses. So, so. So that's the case. Hold on one second. So, okay, let me just tell you very briefly before we stop the case of the no de Behuda, there was once a case, there was a wagon driver and his, and his uh, boss, they were traveling and then they came to a town and then they, and they stopped for the night in Prague. And in the morning, the wagon driver says to the boss, okay, wagon driver, get up and, and drive with me and drive me. And he says, what are you talking about? You're the wagon driver. So each one was saying, you're the wagon driver. So they didn't know what to do. So nobody knew what to do. Each one claimed that they were the boss and all the assets were his. So they went to the Node of Yehuda and he said, oh, this is a very big question. And he put them both in a room for uh, a half hour and they're sitting there. And then he, he opens the room after a half hour and he goes, okay, wagon driver, come here. And immediately the wagon driver jumped up and goes, ah, I caught you, you're the wagon driver. So you see, uh, you know the Behuda. Don't mess with it. All right, we'll stop the recording here. Shkoyach.